And today on a bench we have an RCI 39 VHP. Uh, I got a really weird, or at least I kind of considered it weird the way it was worded, email. Um, customer asked me about this radio. S said that when he hooks up the frequency counter to the speaker jack, it's off. The last digit of the counter is off. So like on channel 20, his counter would show 27.206. And I'm thinking to the speaker jack. I, I just, for some reason, it just... Well, it's not for some reason. It just plain didn't make any sense to me. How do you hook up a frequency counter to a speaker jack and get a frequency counter to read anything? <laughs> I just, yeah, I was whew, right over my head. I said, if you send the radio and the, the counter in, we, we'll get her straightened out. So, he did. Now, the radio is currently hooked up. Uh, through a dummy load, but it goes to the sample port, and then we can view it on the spectrum analyzer. So I have the center frequency of the spectrum analyzer set to 27.205. I have the span, so from one side of the screen to the other, is set to 1000 hertz. So the center of the screen is 27.205, and then 500 hertz in either, either direction. And key the microphone, and I have a continuous peak marker turned on you can see it's 27.204978 and that has changed about 80 maybe 90 hertz as the radio warms up the frequency drifts that's it's a ranger what can you say <laughs> they tend to be rather drifty now that doesn't really matter 80 hertz 100 honestly two 300 hertz off really doesn't matter on a radio like this because it's an am only rate i think it's am only doesn't have fm uh, no it's am only um, and you'll never, you'd never notice a couple hundred hertz of drift, but I can understand where he's just, it just kind of looks kind of strange when he's looking at his counter. But I, I still, like I said, I just, what in the hell is he talking about a speaker? I've never seen a speaker, you know, you plug a speaker into the speaker jack and you get the frequency. Then it, he sent it and I unboxed it. Yep, sure enough. Now it doesn't plug into the speaker jack, this external speaker cord does. This radio has a frequency counter output on it, and I have never seen one of these. <laughs> this is a Texas Ranger, I think it was. Uh, yes, Texas Ranger. It's an SR166FB. So it's a speaker and a frequency counter all in one. <laughs> I, I, that's that's a novel idea. I think that was whoever thought that up. Brilliant. That's that's a great idea. You got a speaker, and you can see how small the counter modules have gotten compared to the old counter modules in the Ranger radios. It used to be huge, big, clunky boxes. Yeah, they are tiny little counter modules now. But um, this was reading 27.206, and I now have it reading 27.205. The problem with counters like this is they're frequently when they leave the factory they're not dead on. The other problem is is your radio, especially an AM radio like this, and let's see if it's changed even more. Yeah, it's changed even more. Twenty seven two oh four, yeah, seven oh, and I saw six eight flip up there on the screen for a second so it's still drifting down some <laughs> but that's the that's the problem with a lot of radios is they're not extremely frequency stable so as the radio warms up the frequency drift because the crystals and all the other components in here and in the tune circuit as they change temperature they're cha actually changing value slightly which affects the oscillator frequency let me turn off this other radio um and then on top of that, you've got a counter now looking at that. And if it's slightly off in the opposite direction, there's a crossover point. Well, you have to remember, this thing's only reading the, the finest resolution this counter reads is 1,000 hertz. <laughs> there's three missing digits here. That's 27 megahertz or 27 million. So there's three missing digits here. So if you have a counter... And it doesn't need to be a speaker like this. Pretty much anything from Ranger that has a frequency counter. It can be, and remember, Ranger has made a lot of radios for other companies. So, you know, if you got like a Galaxy or something, it has a frequency counter. If you're sure that you're transmitting on frequency, but you have a counter that's off by maybe a digit, they are adjustable. There is a, an alignment you can do to these. Now this actually has a little trimmer pot on the front that's accessible through this hole there, and that's that's the intensity of the display. 
but if you look on any of these counter modules and I don't care if it's the, the big old ones in the metal boxes or if it's a little teeny tiny one like this if you look on the back side you're going to find now the older ones this part is going to be bigger it's going to look pretty much the same but it's just going to be a lot bigger physically that right there that's what you're looking for it kind of looks like a trimmer resistor but it's a trimmer capacitor okay so it's a variable and a matter of fact you can see it marked there VC1 for variable capacitor if you adjust that that changes the oscillation frequency of this reference crystal right here which ends up changing the digits on the display now what you want to do is because here's the problem you turn your radio on the counter may read let's say this was a radio when you turn first turn the radio on the counter reads correctly but 10 15 minutes a half hour later after the radios had time to warm up and this frequent frequency counter module because it's going to drift a little bit in frequency too but as both of them warm up that last digit changes it might drop down to four or go up to six what you need to do is find the hap basically the happy medium with that little variable capacitor right there so get an alignment tool and unfortunately the VR or not the VR the variable capacitors that this specific frequency counter speaker uses that size is not a standard size for a normal <laughs> alignment tool this one is too big this one is too small so what I have here is, is a modified one now modifying one of these is fun what you'll need is a dot because these are made out of ceramic because you want to try to use something that's non that's non-metallic because that's a capacitor if you stick a, a metal screwdriver in there that's going to throw the frequency off drastically it's the same thing like sticking a metal screwdriver down into a ferrite core in a transformer it, it's completely useless trying to do it that way because you get interaction with your tool but I just took one of these and I've actually filed the tip a little bit narrower to fit these more modern uh, variable capacitors here but that's all you need to do is just slightly tweak that but what you want to do is is you want to rock that v variable control back and forth so like in this case we'll transmit again I yeah, see we're now we're at 27.204955 it just <laughs> the radio is just drifting as the radio heats up the hotter it gets the more the frequency is dropping because when I first started off it was over here somewhere and it's now over here but what you want to do is is rock that little variable capacitor back and forth if you want this to let's say end in a 5 rock it till you get to the point where it says 6 and then rock it back in the other direction until you get it to find four or to where it turns into a four what you want to do is is get right in the middle so rock it four it'll go five six five four and what you want to do is find the middle point that way if your radio if you have a radio like this that does drift <laughs> with temperature change and especially in a mobile radio if you put this in a car and it's the middle of winter it may be zero degrees outside and then you turn the car on you've got your floor heater turned on and then the radio heats up you know it heats the cab up and you've got a heat vent blowing directly on this thing this radio could get up to over a hundred degrees so you know you've got a hundred degree Fahrenheit temperature swing that could cause a drastic frequency drift in this radio and it's going to be reflected on the counter if the counter is not centered because like I say that's the problem it only reads in thousand Hertz resolutions so this is what I would call what a five and a half digit I guess counter because you've got or yeah five and a half one two three four five it's a half digit much like a multimeter like that is a five and a half digit multimeter and that often confused me when I first started you know, using higher end multimeters where they have very fine resolution because you get a five and a half, I've got a six and a half digit multimeter in HP that I use. But what is that half? There, there is no half display on the meter. Well, actually there kind of is and it's the same as this. That half digit is the missing digit. It's kind of the average. So once this missing digit if it were to go from like let's say five to six 
that's when this digit would then flip to 6 because you've now crossed the 50% point, you know, halfway point. And it'll be more, it'll be more closer to 27.206 than it is to 27.205. And vice versa in the other direction to get down to 4, you know, if the actual frequency coming into this thing, well actually the frequency coming into this counter is not that, it's tapping off an IF frequency, but let's just say it's 27.205 coming in, the counter should read 27.205. If the frequency coming into this were, let's say, 27.205.555, okay, this will display 27.206 because 555 hertz is closer to turning this a 6 than it is keeping it a 5. So it's kind of like I said, once you pass that 50% point, but that's what you want to find. When you're turning your alignment tool, You want that's why you want to try and rock it back and forth, get it to go to a 4, get it to turn into a 6, and find that happy medium in between those two and get, the, get it centered. And then as your radio does and the counter too because remember like i say it's it's got it's got it's nowhere close to as bad, it's nowhere close to as bad as a drift of the radios themselves but as it as this radio because this one apparently yeah, we're down to 27.204943 jesus this thing drifts a lot <laughs> this thing's drifted over got 100 and 40, 150 hertz, I think, probably since I turned it on. Um, but as it drifts, as long as it doesn't cross that 500 hertz point in either direction, this counter should stay 27.205. It should never drift down to 27.204 unless in the case of this, because remember, I have this count the spectrum analyzer set up to display 1,000 hertz. So it's 500 hertz on either side of the actual channel frequency. If that peak rate there were to get the whole way to the edge of that screen and then go just slightly below it, the counter should then read 27.204. If that peak were to get up, go up just slightly over 500 hertz, the counter should flip and say 27.206 because it's closer to 27.206 than it is 27.205. But, yeah, that's just a little tip on these counters. If you have one and the last digit's not right, and it doesn't matter how many digits it has. It can be a 5, a 6, a 7, or an 8 digit. If the last digit or even the last couple digits are incorrect, all of these counters have a frequency adjustment. It's going to be a, a, a variable capacitor somewhere on the board. Um, and the older the counter is, the bigger that part's actually going to be. Like I say, this is a little teeny tiny surface mount one because this thing is a fairly, I guess it's like a brand new frequency counter. But yeah, just find that happy medium, get your, get your number where it's supposed to be. And like I say, just make sure that when you rock it back and forth, you're halfway between it flipping a four and a, and a six. And you'll be set.